translated to English in Arizona, and he, for whatever reason, did this thing, tried to make it in English, tried to change the meanings, and he left two verses out. No Muslim on earth will accept them, what they're doing, or these people as Muslims, just because the two verses not being there. They're at the end of chapter 9, if you have a... By the way, we have some Qurans over here, and they tell me that if you would like to take one, <laughs> and said one, but... Uh, these are not for Muslims, by the way, brothers and sisters. <laughs> if you want some, we can fix you up. But these are for our guests. And I know you have some ideas you'd like to give on to somebody, but this tonight here is for our guests here, as well as the tapes and so on that are over there. I didn't mean to stick a commercial in here, but I guess you guys are used to watching TV. You don't mind. Just put a little commercial in here and there. What I wanted to emphasize here was the fact that truth is a very important commodity in Islam, and the Quran is considered hot which in Arabic language it means absolute perfect truth. When Quran comes, we don't argue with it. No Muslim is going to argue with Quran. He might argue with some of the other things uh, that are understood or way people interpret things. He might argue with that. He might have different opinions. But when it's Quran, is Quran. That's it. So that you know there are 114 chapters the Quran is divided into 30 equal parts for recitation purposes, so you can recite one thirtieth every day. At the end of the month, you've recited the entire Quran. It is memorized in the Arabic original language. It is not considered Quran if it's translated to something else. It's considered only interpretation of meaning. It means that if anybody really wants to be a scholar in Islam, they have to learn the Arabic language. Otherwise, they're not a scholar. Simple as that. I don't care how much they know. If they don't have the Arabic language and the classical Arabic language and they have not memorized the Quran cover to cover, we don't consider them a scholar. We consider them a knowledgeable person, a nice person, kind person, but not a scholar. This is important also when you consider a judge in Islam. If we have an Islamic state and we have a judge, before he can ever put on the robe, walk up there, and we don't really do that, but suppose he wants to come up and, and pass judgment, one of the first things he has to have is this classical Arabic language, the memorization of the Quran. In addition to that, memorized many, many books of traditions, oral traditions that have been handed down from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, since 1400 years. He has to have this kind of memory or he's not allowed to even apply as a judge. Then he has to have his background in Islamic jurisprudence and they have to be a doctor in it. Why do you bother to go into that, Yusuf? Why do you want to tell us that? We came here for something else. No, I want to show you the integrity that's expected in Islam. That's why in Islam, when we hear certain things from others, and then they charge us with it, we have, we're, we're mortified. We can't believe that things that are being attributed to us, things that they see their own group do. I will mention, without saying what country, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, a particular country where I was visiting some, t some years back. And while I was over there, a leader of a particular religion, this is the, I'm trying to be very generic, <laughs> being politically correct, a leader of a particular religion had been exposed for having had sex with his congregation. Okay? Not one congregation at different points in time, he videotaped it and he was blackmailing the congregation members with this and it came out and the pictures were out all over the news and they were talking about this in public. As a result, the government, although a lot of Muslims live in that particular country, the government put that down and they scooped up all the newspapers and put the newspaper company out of business. Okay? Because they said, you know, we, we don't want anybody talking about any religions. Okay? When they went to the highest ranking leader of that particular faith and they asked him, how could such a thing happen? How could your leader of your group do such a thing? The answer didn't come back to describe what he did. By the way, the punishment was they just gave him a new parish. That's all. When they went to this one top leader and they asked him, you know what he said? He said, oh, well, everybody does it. He said, your, your imams probably do the same thing. For us, that's unbelievable. For us, it's totally unacceptable. If any of our leaders ever did such a thing as this, we would kill them. Okay? 
not negotiable because this is the scum of the earth and an example has to be set so if you wonder why Islamic law is so hard because it's based on truth on the other hand now let's go into Islamic law jurisprudence or Sharia Sharia is very beautiful because it's in place to protect the innocent not the guilty we live in a society over here that work very hard we work very hard to protect the guilty you don't think I know what I'm talking about but guess what I spend a lot of time in prisons I spend a lot of time in the federal in the county in the city in the state penal institutions and I know these guys firsthand and when they get on that witness stand oh and when you see them sitting in the court and you think oh poor baby but when you hear them confess with their own mouth a 15 year old boy told me he had shot his friend right in the face with a gun and he told me point blank he said I'd do it again and you know why just because he insulted the guy's gang like the Crips or the Bloods he was in a group and this boy said your gang is and he used a bad word and he pulled a gun out and shot him right in the face and killed him the kid he grew up with and when I looked at him you know what I couldn't help myself I'm a bad boy I looked him right in the face I said your gang is a and then I said the word in his face I said this is nuts how are you gonna try to act like you're a Muslim and you do something like this it's totally out of Islam this is a way way of the other spe the other spectrum we're not even talking about the same thing if anybody can do something like this it's not Islam and I don't have any heart for the people who do this because guess what this is what I said they'll do it again and again and again rehabilitation is for people who have a conscience rehabilitation is for people who have a soul rehabilitation is for people who will repent but if you've got people out there that they're just looking for the next opportunity they'll do it again and don't think just because people can look you in the eye and smile while they talk that that's a real good old boy down in Texas when we talk about somebody oh he looks you in the eye though when he talks to you all that means is he can do what lie with his eyes open because this is a serious subject when you start talking about law for all of the human beings if only one human is going to make the law up what do you think he'll do he'll make it in his own favor right or wrong Just think about it if somebody told you you could have the whole earth and everything in it right now and you make the laws are you going to make any laws against yourself I don't think so I really doubt it you will make laws that are compatible with what your thoughts or your background or your ideas are so the Islamic law is in place to do what Islamic law is in place to protect everybody and be fair at the same time so that's why it puts such a value on truth some of the issues people ask me about are in adultery they say well looks like Islam's pretty tough on adultery well first of all let's look at what adultery actually is and then we'll talk about what Islam really does do and we need to be honest right okay what is adultery in Islam there's two types one is something that, that people do before they're married and this is one category the other one is what people do after they're married if they do it prior to being married this is bad and it can cause problems one of the biggest problems it can cause right away immediately it can cause spread of diseases immediately down the line it also causes birth of children who are not from parents that are supporting and loving and raising the child together it's no family situation then you have problems of dependency on the society then you have these psychological things and you so and so and so so this is one category and the punishment for it is what it's not killing anybody but if they do it in the open and they're caught right in front of everybody then they'll be punished in front of everybody but when things are not out in front of everybody then this can be dealt with quietly in the home and take care of the parents or talk to the other parents try to work things out let's get this boy and this 